Hey guys, welcome back to another voiceover IP video. Today we're going to look at the Gigaset SL450 uh, handset. And I think this is a really nicely designed uh, voiceover IP ha DCT handset uh, made in Germany. Over here in Europe, they are quite popular. If you're located in the US, this might be a little bit of a specialty product, but nonetheless might be interesting to watch for you guys. And basically what you do with these, um, there are different designators. And as soon as you see a Gigaset product that has the HX designator at the end, it means basically that you can connect them directly to uh, your router. So there are different router types uh, located here. Like this is a very popular one, or this is uh, one of the telcos gives this. Probably don't know the brand. This is like the Fritz box, and this is the uh, German German Telecom. The I think in in the U.S. you only know T-Mobile, but in any case, you can connect these directly to your router, and thereby you don't need uh, this additional base station. Usually, when I looked online, a lot of the voice over IP uh, handsets. They always come with a base station. Here you only have the handset and you could, uh, in fact, you could take multiple handsets and maybe I can show this to you here. Sorry guys, it's all in German because I, I am located in German, but you can collect up to six of these uh, handsets as long as they have the CAT IQ 2.0 standard, uh, which basically that's the standard that enables uh, your router to work as a voice over IP base station and it also enables the DCT handsets to con a voice over IP capable DC DCT handsets to connect directly to your router. And uh, here's my old model. So as you can see, you could easily take multiple ones and that would basically work not only as your internet router, but also as your little tiny phone system. So guys, before I digress any further, um, as you can see in the navigation below, this is the introductory part. In part two, I'm going to do an unboxing of the uh, SL570 and I'm probably going to compare it a little bit to this uh, more budget, uh, the entry level version. And uh, yeah, um, that's going to be interesting. It has a lot of nice features and even from what I've read, while uh, the previous model you could only connect a wired headset, I think here you can also connect the Bluetooth headset. So that's uh, probably going to be a useful feature. And then also in the configuration part, I know with the predecessor, which I tested previously, you could use a USB cable and copy all your contacts uh, with, uh, with an app uh, on your computer directly onto the phone. So maybe we're going to test this here as well. And then after, after that is uh, part four, the summary and conclusion part. I'll tell you what I think about this uh, DCT handset as compared to the more budget friendly version that I tested earlier. So guys, why don't we just get rolling with the unboxing and then jump to the configuration part. Uh, I'm excited you're here. Let's get started. So guys, now in the unboxing part, we're going to have a closer look at the Gigaset SL450HX voiceover IP uh, phone. And uh, maybe you noticed uh, previously in the introductory part, um, the sound of my microphone that I'm using right now, it was probably, probably probably a little bit too sensitive and I reduced the sensitivity so the sound should be uh, better right now. So let's uh, have a look inside the box right here. Uh, we have the manual, we have the battery, we have a charger and the docking station. And the docking station apparently is made out of uh, metal. It has a metal top so that looks really nice. And uh, it kind of reminds me of the Gigaset uh, professional range uh, for the business customer. So that's nice that they bring that to the consumer. And the power plug, you just connect that here and it just uh, locks into place. So let's have a look at the phone itself. We have the back part, a belt clip. Let's take this out real quick and you see it's kind of like kind of reminding me a little bit from the design almost of a cell phone uh, which is kind of interesting and you see it has truly uh, a metal surrounding but the buttons are not metal so that's like a metal frame and again a really nice big display and connector for a wired headphone and apparently the phone also has Bluetooth support for Bluetooth headset, which I haven't tested yet, but 
that could also be really useful. The battery is a lithium ion battery with 700 milliamp hours and like I told you, like on a cell phone, it is super, super flat. So that, let's just put this in and already the phone starts up. So um, I'm just gonna have to put on the back cover here real quick and you're always gonna be a little bit careful. Okay, I, it seems I had to turn this, I had turned this maybe the wrong way. So you gotta be a little bit careful, but there you go. It just snaps into place and you end up with a really, really nice and flat uh, handheld voice over IP phone that connects uh, directly to your router. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put this in a docking station, charge it up for a while, and then we jump to the configuration part and I show you how to connect this to a other router and use the router as a voice over IP base station. Like I told you previously, this will only work if your router supports the uh, CAT IQ 2.0 standard. Um, that was the standardization that these really nice DCT handsets use to work uh, like a voice over IP phone. So uh, let's get rolling, let's charge this up and then go to the configuration part, guys. So guys, right now we jump from the unboxing part, part two, to part three, the configuration part. And here I show you how to set up the Gigaset SL450HX uh, DCT voice over IP handset with your router. And uh, in the case uh, you are not located in Europe, let's say you are located, uh, located in the United States, then that might be a little bit different. Um, at least with that router, I know uh, it's uh, specific to Europe, so you may want to check uh, with your specific country. But in the case of this router, um, what I have to do to pair the uh, handset, uh, I just push this DCT button for a couple of seconds, and then uh, the router should go into pairing mode. Maybe some light starts to flash, but in any case, uh, you may want to double check um, because additionally to pushing this button for a couple of seconds to put the router into pairing mode, you also have to enter a password and the password usually is four times zero, but obviously I already changed this to a custom password. So just push the pairing button and make sure you have the password and then you uh, can pair your handset with the router by uh, going into pairing mode and uh, punching in the password. So uh, let's uh, do this right now and then we can do some more uh, detailed looks on, on the configuration inside the router. So let's go. So guys, I pushed the register button on the base station and now I, uh, I'm pairing the handset with the base station. It searches and now it asks to enter the system pin. Obviously, uh, you can change the language of the handset. Right now it's all in German. So I'm just gonna enter the system pin and then we're gonna be locked uh, and paired with the base station. So let's, uh, with the router, so let's go. So guys, success, the handset is successfully paired uh, after I entered the pin. And uh, yeah, we can we can switch the language to any language you like, uh, English or a bunch of other languages. It pulled already the time that looks really, really nice. So uh, if the router is already uh, set up, I mean, this is the second handset that I have. It already detected it as handset two. Uh, like I told you, I have a, a previous generation, a more affordable one, and this is now the premium one with the metal frame. Um, let's quickly jump into the router, have a check on the settings there as well. And then we have already set this up, so it's pretty, pretty easy to pair. And so guys, after you paired the Gigaset uh, phone with your voice over IP capable router, um, there are a bunch of interesting settings that you can uh, pick inside the router. So uh, to log into your router, just open a web browser and then type uh, the IP address of the router. In my case, it's the 192.186.1.1. Uh, and uh, I'm just gonna enter the password. Obviously, it goes without saying that if your router still has the standard password, um, you should uh, change the standard password uh, to make it more secure. And obviously, I did that already. So um, obviously, it's all in German right now. So because it's a German router, basically, there's the te telephony section. So you can add uh, multiple phone numbers. In the case of Europe, it's kind of interesting when you have uh, the, uh, we call it VDSL. It's basically a 10 uh, MB, MB download and 5 MB upload. So it's a pretty nice, uh, fast internet connection. It's not, I think you call it fiber to the curb or something like that. And I'm pretty sure it's gonna get faster soon. So uh, I'm at the base settings. So I'm gonna go to advanced, advanced settings because once I'm in the advanced settings, 
uh, I have way more options that I can configure the router. So uh, basically uh, with this uh, fast internet connection, you get three voice over IP phone numbers. This is bundled and included. So basically I could just add three numbers. There are provider presets, which is really cool. Saves you a lot of time. So uh, in my case, I'm at this provider. So I would just add the three phone numbers. And after I added the three phone numbers, I would just hop over to telephony devices and in, in the telephony device section. So uh, guys, uh, you already see if you're uh, coming from overseas and planning to live in Germany and you buy a German router at the store, um, you might not be, you might have a hard time configuring it because uh, I, as far as I can see, I don't think you can switch the language in this router. So that might be a little bit tricky if you're uh, working overseas. Um, so unless you find my tutorial for some reason. But the point that I would just make, you get three voice over IP phone lines. Currently I have two handsets connected and now I can configure rules. Let's say you live in a single family home, you have the parents and you have the kids and you have these three phone lines. So you could have one phone line for the parents, uh, one phone line for the kids, and then a third phone line for work. And then you can, could configure rules. So every phone could uh, have their own phone line or a phone could share, or two phones could share the same phone line. Or let's say you have separate ringtones here. Yeah? A private call comes in, you notice it. okay, it's on this handset with this ringtone. A uh, call from work comes in, work emergency, you have a third phone uh, with a separate ringtone. A call for the kids comes in, they have their own. So it's uh, you can really nicely organize this. And uh, I think this is really the way to go forward. Voice over IP comes in really handy. One last thing, uh, just in case uh, your router still has the standard uh, pin for the DCT, um, make sure to change it. Um, Yes, you have to push the pairing button on the router to uh, pair a handset. But uh, yeah, it makes sense to change the standard pin. So don't forget that. And then here is also, they even give you a tip. The router company even uh, created a, a app for your cell phone. So in theory, uh, although I don't use that, you could download an app on your phone. And then uh, when you're at home in your uh, Wi-Fi network, then you could make phone calls, uh, landline, voice over IP, phone calls over the app on your smartphone. So you see that there are lots of new features that they configure. The only thing that I really didn't like is the answering machine uh, feature because uh, for the answering machine to work, uh, first of all, with the TP-Link router, you have to plug in a USB stick. And second of all, I'm when I tested it earlier, I mean, I didn't test it right now, but uh, when I tested it last time with the previous phone that I had, um, it, it wouldn't work that well. So that's that's the only downside. Um, sometimes, the, because the, basically the router works as your base station. So the router company has to program it that the, the handset and the uh, base station router that it works very well. And uh, for the most part it does, but when I last tested it, the answering machine didn't work as well. So if answering machine is really super important for you, then maybe don't go for the HX series or at least make sure that your router has a really good answering uh, functionality because from all I can see the answer uh, the answer the answering box machine is the, it's is inside your router um, there's a different company in Germany uh, 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 I think it's a German company that produces routers uh, the Fritz box uh, I don't think you can buy that overseas but they supposedly have a better feature where you don't have to connect the USB stick and where the implementation is better. That's the only uh, minus that I have. Otherwise, I think it's really cool that you can make these number assignments, register multiple uh, handsets, I think up to six, and uh, that makes it really, really nice. So guys, this concludes the configuration part. Um, I just gave you a quick walkthrough. Let's jump to the summary and conclusion part. So guys, this concludes the unboxing, configuration and review of the Gigaset SL4950HX DCT voice over IP handset. And as you have seen, the configuration is really pretty straightforward. Literally, the only thing I had to do is push the pairing button on the router, uh, put the router pin into this for the DCT station 
into the handset and already it was connected and ready to go. And you can even connect, uh, let's say a Plantronics headset to this router if you're more like in a business environment uh, because it has this headset connector uh, right here on the side of the phone. So that should be really pretty straightforward. I hope if you can see that clearly, you just plug it in and I already know from previous uh, testing previous GigaSet uh, phones that that's also a really good solution. Uh, Personally, I like the wired solution. Um, this particular phone, supposedly also you can connect a, a head, headset via Bluetooth, which um, I'm not gonna test right now because otherwise the video is probably gonna get very long. And the second thing you might also wanna look into is head, maybe head over to the Gigaset webpage and go to downloads and look for the quick sync software because like I mentioned earlier, you can also use the Gigaset quick sync software to connect this uh, voice over IP DCT phone to your computer. You see there's a USB connector, micro USB at the bottom. And I think this is very common. M most people have a USB cable at home. So you just uh, connect this to your computer, download the QuickSync software, and then you can copy all your contacts into the phone without having to enter them all manually, which I think is kind of handy. Granted, I have only previously tested this under Mac OS. I downloaded the app uh, for Mac. And then basically what the software can do or what the software did is it accessed my Mac uh, address book. Uh, usually on Mac, you have all your contacts uh, in the address book and then pull the data out of there and the QuickSync software shuffled it into the phone. So I imagine if you have like a huge address book uh, with a lot of contacts, I'm not exactly sure on how many contacts you can copy into that phone. Maybe there's a limitation of the number. Maybe you can copy only a certain amount. Um, but in my case, I don't have uh, that many contacts. So that seemed to work very fine. Uh, also, there's a distinction between contacts that are saved internally in the phone versus contacts that are saved in, uh, in the base station, uh, which is the router. So obviously, if you use the QuickSync software, it will copy the contacts onto the phone. Uh, so that's what it does. Um, Guys, uh, but uh, what I can do is I can do a separate uh, video about this QuickSync software. That might be uh, very interesting. Uh, in any case, you're invited to head over to my channel page because there I have lots of other useful voice over IP videos about different voice over IP phones from different companies. Since the Gigaset uh, products are a little bit more common in Europe, uh, maybe you want to check out some of the Yealing videos that I did because Yealing is a little bit more global from all I can see and uh, maybe watch some other voice over IP tutorials to just get started. But uh, I mean, if you're from, this, from the States or from overseas, it might be interesting to see uh, how voice over IP is used in Europe. Uh, so you have a little bit of a comparison. You learned something new. Uh, I'm excited you are tuned in. So I see you as a subscriber and in the next video. All the best to you, take care and have fun with your new phone. Bye bye. And yeah, like I mentioned earlier, because the Gigaset SL450HX review that you just watched is mostly targeted at Europe, you might also be interested in comparing uh, more global models like the Yealink. Although I have to say the Yealinks are mostly for business co uh, customers, so they are a little bit more tricky to configure than the consumer wants. Uh, I see you as a subscriber on my channel and in the next video. Have fun with your new phones. All the best to you. Take care.